So please make sure you smile at somebody this morning. Not just a cosmetic one. A smile from the heart. Praise the name of Jesus. How many of us are glad we're alive this morning? Mm. God is good. We thank him for life. We thank him for good health and sound mind. Father, Lord, we thank you. We magnify your holy name, the King of kings you are, and the Lord of lords, the ancient of days. For there is none like you. We thank you for the gift of this new day, a day that you have made, and we are rejoicing and we are glad. And our declaration is nothing shall change that in the name of Jesus. We commit all we shall do this day into your hands. Father, be glorified. Honor us with your presence and overrule the agenda of man in the name of Jesus. We shall all live here bigger, better, and stronger than we came in in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. For his mercies. Amen. For his mercies endureth forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. In the highest. Amen. For his mercies endureth forever. Amen. For his mercies. Amen. Amen. Blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and mind, be unto the Lord forever and ever. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might be unto the Lord forever and ever. his gates with thanksgiving I will enter his cause with praise I will say this is the day that the Lord has made Has he made you glad? 
I am so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. And hallelujah. I am so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Has he made you glad? I am so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. And hallelujah. I am so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. That shall remain our testimony in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, receive our praise and our worship in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you please pray for your neighbor? Pray that this service shall be a blessing unto him or her. That all that God has in store for him or her this morning will not elude them. They shall live here this day having received all that God has. That this service shall be a life-changing encounter for your brother, for your sister and the Lord's presence. That the word will make meaning to them that the word will be a blessing to them, that the word will heal them, that the word will give direction, that the word will give comfort, the word will give strength. In the name of Jesus, that the word will give an, an, a reassurance to your brother, to your sister. This morning, they may have come here this morning with a heavy heart, but the word will lift their spirits in the name of Jesus. There shall be a re-energizing by the Spirit of God in their hearts this day. Rima mandoro breke hiri bo sande ka hiri bo shaga ragaba. Rima mandoro bo saga de ke di braka hiri bo shanda. Riba baba kolo bo bo shanda ka hiri bo bo shanda. Riba baba baba kolo bo bo shaga de ke bo bo sondo. Pray that the portion of blessings that God has marked for them this morning, all they shall receive ka hiri bo shanda. The Bible says that God loads us daily with benefits. There's a fresh portion of benefits laid out for you and I this morning, this day. What God has for us will not elude us. We shall not be denied. We shall not be denied. In the name of Jesus. Now what are your own expectations? Please pray for yourself. You know what's heavy on your heart. You know your desires, you know the questions you have to ask God. Please talk to God about it this morning. The year is coming to an end. Some may say, what do I have to show for it? Great things. Why am I so troubled? Great peace. I'm feeling pains in my body. Great healing. It's like everywhere is shut, open doors. It's like the ground is hard for me to walk on. Open heavens that will make the ground easier for you to walk on. The Lord will crown this year for you and I with his, with his, with his goodness. And our paths will be aligned with his fatness. For every seeming shame, double portion of honor and blessings await you.
we shall not lack. This year will end with great blessings, abundance on all fronts, nothing missing, nothing broken. We shall end this year leaping with joy, with shouts of praise, with our heads held up high, not hung down in shame, in the name of Jesus. This year will end bigger and better than we started it, in the name of Jesus. And all that God has in store for you will not elude you in the name of Jesus. You won't have cause to beg for food. You won't lack shut over your head. You won't go naked for clothes to wear. In the name of Jesus. Great peace is your portion. Great peace is your portion. Great peace is your portion. The ground shall be easier for you to walk on in the name of Jesus. And God will bless the works of your hands this season. Little work, great blessings in the name of Jesus. No longer hard work, but smart work. God will give you the strategy and God will guide you accordingly in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. We yield ourselves unto you this service. Father, be glorified. That is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here this morning with a testimony, I want to share with God's people. There will be a pastor waiting to attend to you. Enjoy this service and God bless. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we have come to thank you this morning. We declare, Lord, that you are faithful. You are faithful and your mercy endures forever. Lord, we declare that you are good. You are good. You are a good God. Thank you for watching over us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow.
what door has been shut. When Jesus is there, oh, true police, you are. At all, be true, love, I want. I root, church, love, I want. Love, I want. He beats you, just power. Oh, true.
worthy, worthy of all our praise. He's worthy, mighty God. Hallelujah. We're still going to dance. The praise and worship team sang a song a few minutes ago. Look beyond the artist. Look beyond the beat or the rhythm or whatever you want to call it. And focus on the lyrics. He says, like well, I you know. I am a fair day. Like well, I you know. I am a man to pay. To Jack, I jay, I jay, you. lole. That song says, Not far from now, my joy will come. Not too long from now, you will gather to rejoice with me. That you will eat in abundance without scarcity. And after you've eaten your heart's content, you will not have a package to take home with you. That song is prophetic. You may not be there right now, but that is where we will get to. So the choir will sing that song. I will dance and thank God for what he said to me. To the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the great things that you've done, the great things that you're doing, and the greater things you're yet to do. Father, you're not a man to lie, or the son of man that you should repent. If you have said it, you'll do it. If you've spoken it, it will surely come to pass. That is our confidence. And Father, we know that rejoicing, happiness, and peace is our portion, regardless of what we're faced with. In Jesus' name, amen. May please have your seats. God is good. God is good. God is good. Amen. We have one testimony this morning. Well, one as that now. 
as at now. You heard what I said. Praise the name of Jesus. Sister Agnes, please come and give your testimony. Good morning, pastors. Good morning, church. I'm a daughter in the house. Yeah. And my father's name is Daniel Tyro Gratitude Odukoya. So I also, my name also includes that gratitude. I want to thank God for directing my steps to this church for the past God knows how long. And for the teachings, the prayers, and everything. I've gone through a lot. So through thick and thin, God has given me the grace to stand. So I'm here to say thank you to God for keeping me alive, giving me the grace to overcome a lot of temptations. At times, it reaches a stage for me to say I'm giving up. But when I remember the teachings, I say, ah, small, it will come to pass. And to crown it all, in, the less, than, in less than 24 hours, I'll add a year to my age. So I'm here to say, Father, thank you. Hallelujah. We want to ask you how old we can see the goodness of God upon you. And your youth shall be renewed continually in the name of Jesus. Don't say the word has kept her going. The word has kept her going. The teachings in the house keeps her going. What is your anchor? Praise the name of Jesus. When the storm comes and the wind blows, what is your anchor? When the billows roll, what is your anchor? Let it be the word. But God and his word never disappoints. Praise the name of Jesus. So let that be your anchor. I shall remain well with us in Jesus' name. So can we please bring out our offerings to appreciate God? For his goodness, his tender mercies, and all he has done for us. You may think some things are yet to fall in place, but think for some things are falling into place. You may not have Gucci shoes, but you have some shoes on your feet. You may not have Louis Vuitton clothing, but you're not naked. You may not have had breakfast in Sheraton or Marriott, but you've eaten something this morning. You may not have the latest bends, but somehow, you go to church and you're seated. How you got here is irrelevant. You're here, you're here. You're not naked. The label at the back of your shirt is irrelevant. The quality of food you've eaten is irrelevant. As you're breathing, I'm also breathing. Is that right? So these are things we can thank God for. The Bible says, in all things, not for all, in all things, give thanks. Can we rise to our feet with our offerings and thank God for those little things that we think are insignificant? We heard her testimony. She's been through some things, but the word kept her going. Another birthday within the next 24 hours. We can see, we can hear, we can express ourselves freely. Let us thank God with your own words. Thank God this morning. Be deliberate with your thanksgiving. Be deliberate with your thanksgiving and that offering you're holding this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you. With our offerings this morning, we're saying thank you. 
for the great things you've done, we say thank you. For the things you're doing right now, we say thank you. The greater things you're yet to do, we say thank you. And Father, as our hands are up in abundance, may they never come down due to lack or penury in the name of Jesus. Receive our hearts and receive our offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. May please have your seats as the grace band ministers to us. Hallelujah. Your music attracted me. You want to continue to play? Good morning, church. Somebody expecting some unusual thing this morning? Can I be frank with you? You go with more than you expect. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Come on, let's play, let's play. Come on. Oh, 
Even the devil knows they're not true. I said the living God of everybody knows they're not you the red nose. I saw the living God of
I will lift up my voice. I will joyfully say, hey, for what you have done for me, but for who you are, you are the reason. Song. Oh Lord, oh, shout here, 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 what we are going through, he reigns. It says, he that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. He's not just alive, he's reigning supreme. Even in your situation. I'd like you to leave that song again. He Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you honor. You reign eternally. Indeed, the kingdom is yours. The power is yours. 
the glory is yours. Not just for now, it's forever. We give you praise. We give you honor. We worship you. That's why we're here today. Just to worship you. Just to praise you. Just to thank you. And let the world know that you are a good God. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. But before you do that, make sure you give the person next to you a good smile. Yeah, a good smile. Come on, share the joy. Share the joy. Glory be to God in that. You may be seated. God bless you. Thank you very much, choir. You've done very well today. I appreciate it. I appreciate the choir. Amen. I'll be brief today, but quickly some announcements. Um, if you're married and you're a woman, or you know somebody that will benefit from it, I'll be in a... They call it a chat with Pastor Taiwo. I'll be with the married men this Saturday at 9 a.m. So please. <clears throat> I said to them, I said, wouldn't it be nice to invite our male counterparts? They said, no. Okay, I told them I understand. They said, we want to be free. We want to ask you some questions. And I said, Holy Ghost, we answer them. In Jesus' name. So please make it a date with the Married Women's Fellowship this Saturday, 9 a.m. At the same time, the married men will be in their annual Thanksgiving, the last fellowship for the year. So you are please invited. We have enough room for all the programs. Glory be to God in the highest. Oh, I say glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Hallelujah. We give him praise. Pastor Tosh, good to see you. Pastor Ayo, good to see you. Isn't God faithful? <laughs> Hallelujah. In, the, in your annual convention, right? I'm sure it's been bubbling. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Um, which other announcement do we have to make? I don't know. Yes, yes. I think on Sunday, I think it's this Sunday, right? Oh, yes. Our Heritage of Grace, our drama department, I mean, they have a good presentation, uh, a South African piece in honor of pastor, of our departed pastor, Nom T. Uh, I think the time is three o'clock, am I right? Three o'clock, and it's just for one hour, so come on time. If you come African time, you'll be coming in while we are closing. Praise the Lord, so please come. It's not about her life, no, 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 it's just a part of the culture of the South Africans. And uh, from what I learned, they brought the script to her, so she collected and introduced some things to them. So, thinking that she'll be here when they'll be playing it, but she'll be watching from there by God's grace. Praise the Lord. Any other announcements? No. Okay, let's get into it. How come only Sister Agnes gave a testimony? Sister Agnes, by the way, your testimony looks small, but Pastor Femi did a good job of it. It's a big testimony. It's a very big testimony. I know Sister Agnes. I can remember the first day she entered into a fountain. She really has a testimony. And while she was hearing your testimony, I could clearly hear God. It's a new beginning for you. Uh, something will happen faster here. It will happen everywhere, but I think it's going to be I think it may be faster here. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's a new beginning. Somebody says, you always say it's a new beginning. Are you saying that you are yet to understand the God you're dealing with? It's a God of new beginning. That's why you go to bed at night. He will, see, he will rest all the day's activities so that he will bring it back anew. He will start you on a higher level than you left it. That's how he has created the system. That's why there will be night and day. Then it's, it's, it's another day. Night and day. Another day. That's why his mercies are new. Eh, come on. You see, if you don't understand him, you don't even know how to direct your expectations. It's a new beginning. As long as it is called today, I feel the fire. Oh my goodness. Somebody came and they're saying that, now I know why I came. And you're here. Isn't God faithful? 
See, you can never be that tired as to drop out. God then creates the system to operate that way. It will restart it. I mean, he will always restart it. When you think, I'm right there. I was like, I now begin to wonder what next. It will give you a new beginning. Oh my goodness. And that's why with God, there is a continuous progress. You see, no, 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 but as human beings, we get old, we get to a place where we don't grow anymore, we begin to age. Hey, you see, that's, that's according to the limitation of your thinking. You just thought like a man, which is okay. Have you forgotten? That whilst our outward man perishes, our in- <laughs> you are becoming renewed, renewed, renewed. So you don't need to begin to, 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 to despair over old age. Oh, mm. You are getting younger and younger. You are about to start a new one. As a matter of fact, your body will not be able to hold your strength and your activity. So your body, you have to give way. Because what is inside is getting too big and too strong. That's the Bible. That's the creation. That's the God we have with us. That's why he is never weary. New beginning. In the name of Jesus. I say new beginning. In the name of Jesus. Let me say it again one more time. New beginning. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. you may be seated. If I were you, I would tap into it all. New beginning. I mean, so um, who else has a testimony that has been, you think, what if I don't come? I don't call for testimonies today. Don't tell me you were praying that I would. I probably may not. But you know, you have a testimony and you have a testimony. Ah. Oh, and you have a testimony. Pastor Femi, what's happening? They must have been waiting. <laughs> oh. But we don't want stories. We want testimonies. Hallelujah. Okay, quick, 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 quick. I actually worked in a bit late, so I couldn't join. And um, this testimony happened, um, good morning, Pastor. Bless you. It happened a few weeks back. I was supposed to go to Ibadan for a funeral. And normally, once they tell me it's outside Lagos, I have a habit of I immediately tell you I'm not coming. Once it's outside Lagos. But this time around, I found out that every day my husband will ask me, aren't you going to go? I'll answer my heart. I don't feel like. I, I, in fact, my word was always, uh, I'll but I realized he kept asking. So on Friday, the Thursday before, I decided, okay, I, scared, I started talking to myself that, okay, why don't you want to go? It's fair. And I heard the Holy Spirit answer me and said, but you pray every morning when you step out. If I keep you on the roads in Lagos, I'll keep you there. So I said, okay, I'll go. So I went for the funeral and I made up my mind I was going to stay there. So by 2.30, I turned back and I started coming back. But as soon as we left the toll gate, maybe five minutes after toll gate, I heard something like a bomb blast. So I just held onto my head and I was like, and I looked up, I realized all my windscreen was shattered. They had thrown something for the, to the car and whatever. But I realized that God had prepared this, that thing from the beginning because in the morning I was supposed to use my own driver. My driver normally he's very distracted. So, but my husband just looked at me and said, change the driver. And he gave me his own. His own is very serious. It means we entered the express road. In fact, in fact the way he held on to stare, I knew he was like, I'm in the middle. When I said, he tell me he knows what he's doing. He knows his roads, you know. So immediately it happened. I looked at him and I said, ah, you're not even shaking. He said, boy, I know what happened. And it just went on like that. And I, it dawned on me immediately that. So, okay, then let me jump. Then I remember that as soon as that happened, I heard the devil say, Shetan, you should have just stayed in Lagos, you know. And immediately the Holy Spirit answered me and said, but I, the word says to you that you would walk through the fire, it would not burn you. You will walk through the flood, it will not f- overflow you. That yes, it happened, but what has happened to you now? So at that point I said, okay, Father, I thank you. you know? And I didn't really realize the, the gravity of what happened until I got back to Lagos. And in the recent times, the things that have been happening, and I realized the same thing that happened to me has happened to people, and they were kidnapped, and they were killed. But a lot of times when it happens to us, we just think, it's okay, it's normal. I just come to return the glory to God, to thank God for keeping me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, lift your hand and appreciate God for that. Uh-huh. There's this song that we used to sing. It's the same road that some people would take and worry you on. 
No, no. Worry, you know. And then when we, the children of God, we take it, Amari Iyano. Uh, no, that's one. Another one. Yeah, okay. Tell me, Hele. Okay. Tell me, Hele. No, no. No more, no more. To fire your asile. Yeah, okay. Now, it's not good enough. Yeah, you need to tell us for the Igbo speaking, the, the Jukum speaking, the, what did you just sing? Ah, it's only Pastor Tosin that it appears this thing. Uh, Pastor, you've never tried. That was, that was speaks American in Yoruba. Yes. Okay, give Pastor Tosin. Okay, tell her what I'm going to tell me, Helen. Heights that the strong and mighty climb and they are panting. The height, breath. the mountain. We, the children of God, we climb it with ease. And then, yeah. Oh, yeah, we east. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do fire your And we ah. return with but, joy. But you hear me, bro. <laughs> this simple Yoruba. This simple Yoruba. <laughs> but the way you, the kind of words you just used to describe, it just ah, straight and easy. We give God the glory. But I'm still looking for that song. And that's why I think it came from, you know, the same Red Sea <laughs> that the children of Israel walked through with testimonies of God's abundance and guidance and protections and provisions. Pharaoh and his army got in there. They perished. The same Red Sea. The same Red Sea. Can't you see your stand is different? Can't you see you're unique? Can't you see you're not alone? Can't you see you are guided, you are protected, you are shot? Come on, left, right, and center. He says, I, he said, I will be a wall of fire around them, and I'll be the glory in the midst of them. You talk of glory. Talk of glory. He says, I will go before you. How? As a consuming fire. Oh, my shatalabori, kinte keria. You know, when you know the scriptures, you know what to expect. Because faith is based on expectations of what God has promised, of what he has concluded, that he has given to me, that is yet to manifest, but that will manifest. Glory be to God in the highest. We give him praise. So nobody knows that song? Okay, that's all right. Second person. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> I didn't come out the first time because, first of all, I'm recuperating from an illness. And also, I didn't oh, you think are I had... You are recuperating? Yes. Oh, all right. I didn't think that I had a testimony. But God reminded me of the passage he gave me yesterday about um, the princes of this world contriving against the Son of God. And he reminded me that once upon a time, that conspiration was often against me alone. But now, it is against the Lord and his anointed. Yeah. That I'm a child of God and my life is precious before him. Yes. Last Sunday was my birthday. But this time last week, I was at my desk at work. In a few hours, I would have been brushed out of the office in an ambulance. You know, just a week ago on Thursday. Um, I remember the last time I gave a testimony here it was a Thursday like this. As a matter of fact, it was on my way from work. I had a near-death experience, you know, just around the corner from work. And Pastor Taiwo gave me a, two things that he said, ministered to me. He said, the devil wants to kill you. There is no doubt about that. And the second thing was that, you know, you're a really beautiful girl. I've never really thought of myself as, you know, beautiful. But that day... It was so validating that I took on that word and, you know, I really took it serious. But in all the time since then, it's been all sorts, like not only physically, in spirit, in mentally, the devil has tried to kill me, you know, um, from a financial mess, from my company going bankrupt to bad investments and bad debts, running into over my annual salary, 
I lost my home, you know, I was sick a lot, you know, and all of it culminating into this last week. Uh, by my birthday last year, even my 30th birthday, while I was still trying to recover, you know, sometimes I have a side business where I sell soups and everything. I bought a whole pot of soup. The worst complaints I'd ever gotten from customers came in, you know, at that time as well. I was, for the past two years, I haven't had a birthday that, you know, I, I just always ignored the day. But today, the last birthday that I remembered that I, you know, remembered being a great one was 2020. There was a song. Every year, God gives me a song for my birthday. For the past two years, no song. But today, the choir sang the song that God gave me in 2022. You know, that song, because of Jesus, every day, Nashakara, they do. Suffering, suffering. No, double it up. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I want to just give glory to God. Double, double blessing. For my life. I want to thank God because, okay, Tagbar, Alagbar, Agun, Tommy, Hele, Hele. A small girl like me, the things that I've been through in the past two years, I know people who are older, who are more accomplished in life, who have more resources to them, who have not gotten up till now. I want to give glory to God that every time the devil thinks that he has knocked me down, I rise up again. I thank God for his investment in me. I thank God for because I am precious in his sight and that the prince of this world has nothing of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me say this to you quickly before you go. The Lord will have me tell you that um, you will see your children's children. In the name of Jesus. You understand what I mean. You do. You do. And you will hear. Can one of the pastors let me anoint her? Just anoint her forehead. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I know me sorrow. Only me sorrow. Praise the Lord. Uh, as I promised God, I've come back to offer this testimony. This testimony was due like three Thursdays ago, but I didn't come out. It all started four Thursdays ago. During the service, Pastor called a particular lady sitting somewhere around there. I think her name is Ola Chioso and asked her what was her expectation from the service. And right there, I was seated like two, seats, two rows away from her. And I said, God, why was it not me? And I heard the Holy Spirit telling me, why not connect to the prayers? So I did just that. I was trusting up with something that I should have gotten, which was due like, which I should have gotten like the first week of September, but it hasn't come. So I connected to the prayers and throughout the entire service, while we were singing, unconsciously, I was just shouting my prayer points during the praises and all of that. Throughout that week, every time I remembered my prayer request, I needed to pray. I will also pray for Olachi that God should also grant her request. And the following thoughts, the following Wednesday, just that same week, God did exactly what I requested for. And I've come back to say thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. God will always do what he says he will do. We we'll give him praise. So come back with more testimonies in Jesus' name. Yes. Good morning, Pastor. God bless you. Good, good morning, everybody. Actually, I would have testified, not even this year, but it's a long story. Things always come up anytime I want to testify. But God has made today possible for me to come out, to say my whatever anything I want to force out. God he has been keeping me since when they've given birth to me. But I still thank God that I'm still living till today. I thank God for the salvation of my, of my life, of my soul. I thank God for the protection, guidance over my life. I thank God. God, he doesn't allow the 
wish of evil people, wicked people, babadi people, poknosi people, lamenting people, joining people, marrying people, no. uncourteousing people, three junction power people. Actually, it's a long story, but I need to just, because I don't want to expatiate my word, I just want to knock the snake on the, on the on head. The head. So God has delivered you. Hallelujah. Because uh, actually I'm into a lot of uh, stuff, but in, on my specialization, people they are they are utilize they are utilizing all what belongs to me, which is not supposed to be. I'm into music, comedy, writers, and they are utilizing all what belongs to me. As, as a result of that, again, they want to kill me. Oh, praise God! They cannot kill you. So we, 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 we command in the name of Jesus that you will not die. Amen. You will live. Amen. And you will show for the glory of God. Amen. And we speak the peace of God over your life right now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everybody shout peace. peace. One more time. Peace. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Next person. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Good morning. Church. Um, this year has taught me that, apart from praying for material things, I should also pray for things like having more faith, wisdom, clarity, as well as an intimate work with spirit. And um, that has really helped me a lot. One of the ways that it has helped me, two days ago, the um, accountant in my children's school called and was like, ah, madam, when are you paying the balance of school fees or um, um, exams are starting. And earlier this year, I would have panicked, I would have been worked up, I would have been stressed, but I just realized that for the past two days, I've been calm. No agitation, no anxiety, and it's like, ah, oh, God, you said I won't see shame. So I know very well that my children will have exams and they will come out. Amen. Then my mom, two Saturdays ago, she said she went for a routine check, and then she called me. I was like, ah, bring food, though. It's like, I'm going to be admitted. And I got there. What happened? They, when they were checking her vitals, her BP was 277 over 100 and something. And I'm like, ah, how? And why I'm saying this as a testimony here is because she was meant to go somewhere with my dad. And my dad was trying to push her that money. Let's go, let's go. And she was like, no, let me go to the hospital and do this check first. So I'm very happy she's back home because only God knows what could have happened. At 277, over 100 and something. Ah, in fact, then my last testimony, my son's knee popped out and popped back in some weeks ago. They called me. I went and uh, picked him from school. So went to Igbobi. And my happiness when we got there, the doctor said there was no fracture. Amen. He tore a ligament, but there was no fracture. Hallelujah. Yesterday, my son told me, ah, mom. My, the swelling has gone down and my knee no longer buckles. So I just want to tell, tell God thank you for Amen. all this. Amen. You see, her testimonies look simple, but they are testimonies. And if you don't see God in small things, even in big things, you will not see him easily. I want you to understand that the God you have come to trust will never disappoint you. You are coming back with more testimonies in Jesus' name. God bless you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I give God the glory for his mercy, his protection, his provision. I joined this church on my 50th birthday. It happened to be on a Sunday. You look young. <laughs> I'm 62. Oh. <laughs> so my daughter told me, she came back from school, Mommy, it's your birthday today. I, I've not been going to church for over since my husband died hmm. nine years ago, I've not been going to church, but she said, let's go to Fountain. My sister is a member here. I said, auntie goes there and I like it. I came. I, you know, reluctantly, I came, which was my birthday. I was so happy. I came and my spirit clicked. I said, yes, this is the church I, God has ushered my step to. And I've been coming. And I never knew God has a promise for us in the Bible because I just go to church. I don't really go to church because I need to work to pay my bills, my children's school fees, everything. So I don't go to church. I'll just pray at home, just little prayer. I don't know how to pray that much. But since I started coming to Fountain, 
I pick promises every day. I don't fail procure that promises. And when the church closes, I come here to pray that God, you have to do it. You have to do it. This children, I have three kids. You have to do it. So God took it up. My daughter finished in school. She got a good job. Got promotion after one year when she was at the bank. Got promotion, did everything. I said, he told me, mommy, I want to buy a car. I said, okay. She bought it. And um, January, she told me, oh, mommy, I didn't mean I knew. I wouldn't have bought this car. I've got an admission abroad. Ah, okay. I said, God will do it. God will make a way. I said, okay. I started praying. Come to church. I come to this altar. I pray. God, you just have to make a way. You just have to make a way. And my 60th, 62 birthday, July, she told me, mommy, I'm going to UK. I said, wow, you're going to UK? How did you do it? It's God. As I'm talking, she's in UK now for her master's. Amen. I just give God the glory. Hallelujah. I give God the adoration. Hallelujah. And God that has done this, we do much more. In the name of Jesus. And what we thank God for Amen. is the fact that she said, I was invited to a fountain. And now I know how to pray. Now I know the power in the word. And I see God doing it. That God which has brought it this far has just started. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And just the way you were brought, you will bring many more. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. She's 62. She looks good, doesn't she? Yeah, like I know, I know you answer me. Lara is a young woman, pretty. She looks like she's 30. Ah, always coughing. Ah, yeah. Ah, this Pastor Femi is a bit of a product. We give God the glory. Pastor Dapo is 28. Can you imagine? I can hear him laughing. I single out his voice from everybody. Yeah, God will make you laugh. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes, this morning, just to share some words, and like you've heard, with every word of God that you receive, uh, you go do a warfare with it. You go fight your battles with it. We fight with the word, and we win through the word. He said, with every prophecy that has been given over your life, a war, a good warfare. When the Bible talks of a good, that means it's victorious. I feel the fire. And that's why for you sitting here today and for you listening on this telecast or rather, is it internet cast, this morning, something different is about to happen to you. In the name of Jesus. You say, why are you so confident? Because no, 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 it involves him. That's all. That's the only reason. If it doesn't involve him, I won't be too, so sure, but I'm sure in the name of Jesus. Father, take the glory. Even as you give utterance and clear understanding in the name of Jesus. We worship your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, last week we were looking at Acts in chapter 19. Maybe we should start from there quickly. But I won't dwell on it so much because I believe I'll still come on a Sunday to talk on it. We've preached on it a number of times and I've heard a lot of sermons on that too. Um, 19 and verse 1, remember went this way, and it happened. And I like it when the Bible says, it happened. That means that it can still happen. Glory be to God in the highest. So it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, and Paul, having passed through the upper region, came to Ephesus. Glory be to God in the highest. And finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit uh, since you believe, or when you believe? Oh, glory be to God in the highest. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed. Then they answered, um, they answered him, they said to him, we have not so much heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Can you see the sincerity of their hearts? We've never, really, that was new and news to them. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. 
Then Paul said to them, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who will come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. So when they had these, they were baptized in the name of the Lord, Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit, glory be to God in the highest, came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Uh, now the men were about 12 in all. You know the rest of the story. And he said, the Bible said that he remained with them for a period of about, uh, I think, three months there. And he was praying, I was teaching and arguing, disputing with them concerning, let me read it, because there's something I want to bring out again, which I mentioned, yeah, okay. Verse 8, and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, that's right, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. A lot of people talk about the kingdom of God today, which is good. And they say to you that, no, that most churches are not preaching the gospel of the kingdom. I'm like, you're looking for trouble where there's no trouble. The, the, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is the gospel of the kingdom of God. Clear. Now, if we are trying to criticize the the church saying that, look, you guys are deviating. You're only just preaching this one for certain, that's all right. But people just try to, I don't know, they create problems where there's no problem. Every time we open the Bible and we are talking about Jesus Christ, we are talking about the kingdom. Honest. See what's Paul. Paul from what we've read, Paul was like, wait a minute. You guys are believers, there's no doubt about it. But I perceive something. And what was it? Uh, you're not flowing like you, you understand the person of the Holy Spirit. That was what he observed. He said, we never, who is that, by the way? We've never heard of that before. Wow. Then he asked the question, into what baptism? They said, the baptism of John. He said, very well. True. John baptized. John preached. And John's theme was simple. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is coming or is at hand. Great. And each time he baptized, he would tell them that I'm just preparing the way. The main thing is coming. What's the main thing? The ministry of the person coming, the person, Jesus Christ. So I'm preparing the ground. So repent very well. Now that I've repented, what next? Does that mean I have the power not to get into a situation where I will need to repent and repent and repent and repent again? When I say repent, I mean salvation as it were. Because salvation was not concluded there. What John did was a means to an end. Jesus was coming to give you the perfection. So fine, you did well. But you've not heard of the person of the Holy Spirit? Into what then? Into ah, Now, I'm going to talk to you. And he did talk to them. And he baptized them. How? In the name of Jesus. And if you observe, like we said last week, by the grace of God, every blessing sin you have as a Christian is in Christ. And if you remember in Acts um, is this, oh, why should I forget? Anyway, where Paul was talking to the council, he said, even according to what your poets have written or have said, it is in him, that's Christianity, I live I move. I have my being. You can never define me outside Jesus. That's Christianity. I remember we went ahead to explain that actually what Paul was saying, and if you're not careful here, you will think that when he says, um, have you received the Holy Spirit? Because he observed that 
something was missing. Then the second question, into Okay, how did you put it now? Into, uh, what we have, what then? Um, put it. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? Now, have you received the Holy Spirit? Into what then were you baptized? He's pregnant with meaning. If you are not careful, you think receiving the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit falling from above. If you look at Acts chapter 8, it said, until now, the Holy Spirit hasn't fallen from them, on them. That was when they sent the apostles to Philip in Samaria. They were believers. They were changing, but they were yet to receive the Holy Spirit until the apostles came. Remember? Now, so when he said, into what then? He was referring to regeneration. But when he said, when he said have you received the Holy Spirit? He was talking of the infilling, the baptism. He was talking of the Holy Ghost falling on them like we found on the day of Pentecost. So we're talking of twofold, like we explained last week. Um, am I, I? You know, we've asked God for understanding. Glory be to God in the highest. So the truth is that you can never find a Christian who has not received the Holy Spirit. Not in terms of baptism, but in terms of regeneration. We have scriptures about the work of regeneration is, what, is the duty of the Holy Ghost. Except a man be born of the Spirit and of, of water. He cannot. And in Luke, I think in chapter, towards the end, I think the last chapter, the day he, he resurrected, the very day he resurrected, after appearing one on one, I will end later to all of them, and he will depart. He said, he looked at them, and what did he say? Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Right? Did Jesus say that? Come on, let me say amen. If you believe he said to say amen. So what did they receive? Or Jesus just spoke. They received the Holy Ghost. How come they received on the day of Pentecost? What happened then was regeneration. On the day of Pentecost was the infilling. So I believe strongly that what Paul was saying that I can see regeneration here, but hey, 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 but, hey you have been sure change. You don't know. Say, we have a head. You have a head. Okay. He's walking in your head. You don't know him. Okay, now let me introduce him to you. Anywhere you find the Holy Ghost, you find Jesus, man. He said, really? Of course. What do you think the Holy Ghost is doing with you? If <laughs> He's come to establish Jesus in your life and around you and everything about you. That's why when the Holy Ghost comes, you won't come and say, do so much that you won't say, I praise the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. He's coming to glorify Jesus. Hallelujah. That's how you know. Nobody can say Jesus is blessed by the Holy Spirit. He cannot. Okay. I just, again, you know, we were here last week. Glory be to God in the highest. But surprised to say that the first thing he asked for was, have you received the Holy Spirit? Now, in this case, they said they've never heard. But in many cases, we would have heard, as it were, but we would have forgotten. Sometimes the pressure of the challenges will be because run and live in the Holy Ghost, as it were. That's not to say that he will sit down at home and will go. No, no, no. When I say you leave him, you don't involve him anymore. Whereas it should be the first consideration in any situation in the life of a believer. It should be. That's one lesson that we are learning from this place very clearly. And it's not the first time anyway, because God, I mean, Jesus made it clear where. He said, hey, tarry <laughs> in the upper room. Until you receive the promise, the gift, I mean, the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father. Don't even, the truth is that if you make a move, you will fail anyway. Simple. You need the Holy Ghost. <laughs> we need him every time. So it's always the first consideration in anything and everything we do. If we don't forget that, life changes automatically. And you know what? He will remain like this until the rapture. On the, rap on the day of the rapture, he will follow us. 
But you still come to preach to people because it's only through the agency of the Holy Spirit that people will get born again. So we talk of tribulation Christians, which is still by the power of the Holy Ghost. But it will come through people, but it won't be like as general as it is today. The Holy Ghost is for this era. He was before the time of grace now. Come on. Church, are you here with me? I mean, with kings could not rule without the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Prophets could not minister without the Holy Spirit. Priests could not be priests without the Holy Spirit. But we see that they came solely for assignments and specific people. But everybody here, whew, this is the age, this is the era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you hear it, your simple, this is your turn. In the name of Jesus. Believe in me, it's your turn. Glory be to God in the highest. It is your turn. Glory be to God. It's my turn. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> in Jesus' name. I'm laughing because... No. All right. So with this in mind, this is Ephesus, remember? And remember too that the, we were told that Paul came a certain route, I mean, route. Why? Because if he had come the normal route, he probably would have met with Apollos. So while Apollos was in Corinth, he came through the other route, the back route, and then he came here and he found these this disciples and he started talking to them. And to appreciate it, because of my time, to appreciate what I'm saying, let me just quickly show you something there. We'll go, go back to chapter 18. Oh, yeah. Okay. Chapter 18, talking about Apollos. There is a, the Bible talks about Apollos, a man strong in words, mighty in words. And he said the man could preach very well, but the man was not vast in the current revelation. What revelation? Jesus Christ dying and resurrecting and including us in the deal and then baptizing us with the Holy Spirit. He wasn't vast in that. And that was the first shot that we saw there. But on Sunday, I will bring it out by God's grace. I just thought I would just make a quick summary. So with that in mind, this was Ephesus. And this was during Paul's third missionary journey. He had been here during his first missionary journey and a lot has happened. And then he was following up, as it were. And that's another thing that the church today just has to begin to do very well again. We have to follow up appropriately. We used to do it a lot before. But somehow, maybe because of uh, uh, the situation, uh, urban problems all over the world, I don't know. I think people are dropping the balls so much. But you can follow up using technology as much as we can. We can follow up people. We just have to follow up people by the grace of God. So I would look, okay. Look at verse 24 of 18. Let me just quickly read that. Now, a certain Jew named Apollos, a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, a mighty in the scripture. Can you hear this? Mighty in the scriptures. Came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And being fervent in the spirit, can you hear that? He spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord. Though he knew only the baptism of John. You see where the problem was? So that was their teacher. That was why he said, we never heard of the Holy Ghost. Though he was fervent in the spirit. Was a man mighty in words. So you could see where the where these disciples fell short. Okay. So but today I want to just quickly show you something still about the Ephesian Christians. Turn to the book of Ephesus. Sorry. <laughs> Ephesians. Hallelujah. Chapter 5. Now, this is very, very efficient. It's instructive. Incredible. You read the book of Ephesians and you have good understanding. You don't need to announce who you are. People will know you are a Christian anywhere you go. 
I mean, if you dwell in the book of Ephesians, ah, anywhere you go, the fragrance will be strong. I'm sure you know what I mean by this fragrance. He, he, he through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge everywhere. 2 Corinthians 2 14, 2 15 says, We are the sweet fragrance. Oh, my So, whether you're talking fruits or works that is power, manifestation of the Spirit, I feel the fire. This efficient is just, that's it, it's full. Okay, look at this. I'll just take from verse 15. Read about three verses and then we'll close. By the grace of God. Honestly, I see possibilities. I am so glad that I'm a Christian. I am so glad. I look at faces and I see people who don't even know what they're capable of. And who I know will be coming back in less than a year's time to testify. In the name of Jesus. Yes, that's the way it is. Someone say, Pastor, even you. Ah, I'm a soldier in the, in, the, in the army of the Lord. The day you join the army, you sign. You are ready for everything and anything. But you will finish before you go. Abba, I say you will finish. Abba. In the name of Jesus. Glory be. Somebody shout Glory. Amen. It says from verse 15, it says, see then. Hmm. Amazing God. Okay, let me take Sunday. God will give me grace on Sunday, I believe. Okay. Okay, let me just read this one. See then that you walk circumspectly. Imagine carefully. Not as fools, but as wise. Okay? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Mm. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. It takes wisdom to understand. And do not be drunk with wine. In which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Then speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now my emphasis is 18. Do not be drunken with wine. Uh, in which is dissipation. It can easily lead to intoxication and what does that mean uh, when you are intoxicated you lose control of your mind uh, and where your mind cannot be properly um, uh, engaged for your system uh, some other forces are in charge the same thing that happens when you are drunk is what happens when one is on drugs only that is stronger and more lasting. Yep. The same thing that happens when some people become mentally depressed. Yep. They lose control of themselves. That's what he's talking about. And why will he compare wine and the spirit? Huge contrast, right? But they have the same effect or similar effect. Let me say, not the same, similar effect. The spirit, you yield to the spirit and then it leads you, it guides you. But you see, the difference is that the spirit will not snatch you and deny you of, you, of yourself. The other one will snatch you and oppress you and then controls you. So you do things that naturally you will not find yourself, you will not do. The, the Holy Spirit. How many have you ever been under the influence of the Spirit? I mean, you are drunken with the Spirit and you are being slain. Your faculty is still sensitive. True. It doesn't snatch you and take you away. 
Why next? Honest, even when you're even when you're into exorcism, and it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, huh? They will always remember everything that happens. Even when they're so assaulting ten times. But when dogs take over, or strong drink, booze, it, disen- it knocks off your mind. Now, but look at where I'm going here. <coughs> Okay. See then that you walk circumspectly. Carefully. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Why? Because the days, not as fools, but as wise. Why? Redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. There's so much about you. Believe you me. You are. <laughs> What you are capable of, if God will let you just see it, you will doubt if you are the same person. But there's an enemy of your soul that is doing everything to becloud you. And when you are beginning to even, as it were, begin to break into it, the knowledge, as it were, he looks for ways to distract you. You know, his ministry is well spelt out. Jesus himself spelt out the ministry of the devil so that we don't get confused about that. So when you see him becoming your best of friends, say, don't, don't lose your guard. Say, no, no, it's like beware of the grace coming, bearing, bearing gifts. It's coming for one reason, to steal, to kill, to destroy. Judas can smile all the smile and hug all the hug and give all the kisses. They are kisses of death. So don't be deceived. His ministry is clear. It's after those great dreams in your life. It's after those great breakthroughs and those great blessings that you are to humanity and generations that is after. He knows that God will be glorified continuously in your life. That's what he's angry about. That's what he's coming for. But when you know why should that not scare you? When you know why should not be, why should, why should, why should, not, why should, should you not be unnecessarily angry, get so angry that you get distracted, God forbid. That's why the Bible says you can be angry, but don't be angry and then start to commit sin. Sometimes you are surprised when people say, they, 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 so, they, so, they are so angry with some people um, and they are angry for God and, for, and they, they get so angry that they're like, eh, hey, eh, hey, uh, enough now, who's are you Anybody told you that God cannot fight for himself? Or he cannot fight for himself? Hallelujah. Okay, let me come back to what I'm saying. So, give me back 15. Oh. So, see then that you walk up. Okay, to make it easy. Give me a message quickly so that I can show them something here. Then I'll go back to the Holy Ghost. Message. Just listen to this. I know you have it. Ah. Shall we read together? So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance. Pause. Pause, pause, pause. Make the most of every chance you get. Make the most of every chance you get. Use your head. <laughs> These are desperate times. The days are evil. But don't get swayed by everything is bad. There's still something unusual about you. And opportunities will never stop coming. Make the most of it. Somebody said that the, 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 the his best verse in the Bible said, this is the day the Lord said, I will rejoice and be glad. He said, why? He said, because every day is laden with opportunities. And I know that I'm created to be a blessing. And so may today not pass me by without tapping into why I'm alive today. There's something God is about to unfold to me, through me, to my generation. I will get it. 
make the most. Give me, give me, give me quick, quick, quick. Make the most of every chance you get. The days are evil. These are desperate times. It says, don't live carelessly, unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants. If you go back to my New King James, well, I just quickly tidy it up. New King James. You know what we do on Thursdays that we really come, we give testimonies, we jump, we dance. We, it's, not for, we, it's not because we don't have what to do. It's our own way of expressing the way we feel to him. It has his own power. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So we're talking wisdom now. Okay, go ahead. Redeeming the time. It may be difficult to tell what you mean. He said, make, make the most. Make the most. Don't let the days continuously pass wasted. I feel the fire. Hallelujah. Because the days are evil. Give me the next verse. Therefore, do not be unwise. It's the, it's the wisdom issue. But understand what the will of the Lord is. That was why stop there. Go, go, go further for me. And do not be drunk with wine. Some people drink away their sorrows. Can't you see the life of the devil? When I thought, when I thought of the bills and all the problems and everything and everything, I mean, I'm, 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 give me whiskey. You run here. Drink whiskey, whiskey, until you commit suicide, God forbid. You will wake up after the whiskey effect has gone. To the reality of the problems that are still there. Can you see the lie of the devil? Or some say, let me commit suicide. Does that remove the problem? It removes you, it doesn't remove the problem. In fact, it makes it worse for you because now you are going to face a bigger problem. In the other. Because life is a continuum now. Who say you day? Who say you day? You say, what, what, what do you mean? Honestly, go back to believers class. We teach the Bible in this church. We believe in the indestructibility of souls. Somebody is born, you can never be destroyed again. What if he never receives Jesus? He will be born thousands of years in hell. Thousands of thousands of years. He will still be born in hell after his death. What about that? What about when the one that receives Jesus? He will live eternally with the master. Now tell me, whether he believes or he doesn't believe, does that mean he's vanished, he's gone? No, he will continue to live. What about those who are gone? They are still there, they are still living. They're only living on the other side of the divide. Uh. The difference is that we are here. We, are, we have to be in this flesh because if you don't have this flesh, you cannot stay here. That's why demons, they must enter people to, to carry out evil. <laughs> They need body on earth. But outside the earth realm, you don't need body. See our astronauts, they even go to the, the, if the moon. That's the moon of this earth. Every planet has its own moons. I hope you know that. And our own is just a tiny one in the universe. And even if we just go into the, our own moon, the moon belo that belongs to the earth, your body is not perfect anymore. It's not It's not. It doesn't shoot. Why you come out, you'll be flying away. This body is just for this place. You still exist. Are you here? Put it back. Let me finish. And do not be drunk with wine wearing success. But be filled, and that phrase honestly means be constantly filled uh, with the spirit. I mean, <laughs> if you're not filled, there's no vacuum in nature, even in the spirit realm. I hope you know that. <laughs> if you don't fill up with the spirit, uh, that thing will fill it. Jesus even said, he said, when demons are cast out for a man, uh, and then the devils come, as well, it was well cleaned and garnished, and it was, and nothing there. They entered. Bigger ones. No vacuum. So, yes, I have challenges. Yes, we have challenges. Yes, yes. What, what do you, fill it with the word. You heard the testimony of that woman. Say the word, the word, the word. Uh -huh. 
So they be constantly filled with the Spirit. Be constantly filled with the Spirit. What does the Spirit do? The Spirit is the reason, is, is the source of the wisdom you are looking for. You say, really? Yes. If you lack wisdom, James 1 5, where do you go to? Go to God. He will give you without what? Without holding back. And wisdom is what you need for desperate times. And this wisdom comes from the word. Holy Ghost. Now you can see why have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? You need them for this journey called life. Called life. Called life. You need it. Ask me, I'll tell you. But I'm glad that it's not just with you, which he is, he's in you. Your capacity is indescribable. I said the best of you is always ahead of you. And if you think you're a low achiever, you should understand by now that something has changed. Oh boy. Let's, let's try. It's time to go. Ask your neighbor, have you received the Holy Spirit? When you believed or since you believed? <laughs> Hallelujah. What a question. We give God the glory. There's so much about the Holy Spirit. There's so much about him. You want to worship God? Holy Spirit. You want to have a good relationship? Holy Spirit. You want to have a good health? Holy Spirit. You want to, perhaps, why is your Holy Spirit? Where is Jesus? Ah, it's the Holy Spirit that will execute the purpose of Jesus in your life. For. And by the time he's doing it, you will know that this is Jesus at work. Even Jesus said, look, come, come, come. Uh, I'm going to heaven. You are getting angry. What's wrong with you? He said, when I go, I'll send you another one. Exactly. Exactly. The only difference is that when I was with you, I was tempted to the flesh because I needed to come like a man so you can see me. But he's not, mm -mm, not going to be in the flesh. When he comes, he'll be everywhere at the same time. With the same power. Just like invariably we saw in the life of uh, Paul in Ephesus. Miracles, wonders. I see you coming back multiplied. I see you coming back stronger. In the name of Jesus. And now that you know that it is inside of you, get your inner man charged all the time. See, let that, let, that, let that not be a time when you say, the devil's come and you're me. No, he's a spirit. And when your inner man is charged, how do you get your inner man charged? Remember the prayer in Ephesians chapter 1, in, I'm sorry, in chapter 3, it says that, that he will grant you to be strengthened with might by the Holy Spirit in your shaka. We are inner man. And I realize that when you speak in tongues, you are building yourself up in your we have been edified. So we are not just playing games. The, de the devils are afraid. Lift up, lift up your hands and just say, give him praise. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Oh, yes. Live. You are the living water. Ever flowing fountain. Comforter and Complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Can somebody minister to her or to him? Yes. Live in silence. Honestly, employ 
all the arsenal of heaven that is made available to you. How do you do that? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He makes wise. He makes strong. He makes favored. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Have you received the Holy Spirit? The Bible says in the period of two years, staying in one place, the whole world at the time had the word of God from the mouth of Paul. Not traveling everywhere. Lift your hand and just give him praise. Just give Jesus the praise, give him the honor, the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. Father, take all the glory here this morning. In the name of Jesus, in the lives of your children, prove yourself again. Fill us anew. In Jesus' name we pray. Come back with your testimonies. Remember what we are just saying is that please never leave any moment without being conscious of the spirit. That's all we are saying. Things may be tough and they are, it's true, they are. But you have the Holy Spirit. When I heard the testimony of Bel Biodo, when we were fasting and praying two weeks ago, oh boy, ah! <laughs> you know that this is real. Father, take all the glory in Jesus' name. Shall we hear the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall not have dominion over us. Because the same spirit, yeah, that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us. And he quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Have a wonderful weekend in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming to church. I'm waiting for your testimonies.